Let's give them another hand as they take their seats. Apparently you got some fans. What? Apparently you got some fans here. I don't oh, know any of you. Don't <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have you guys introduce yourselves. So. Why well, you don't know who we are? Well, <laughs> he can't. Pronounce. I think they do, but in case they forgot. Yeah. Uh, I'm Tara Carsian. I'm Andrea Grano. And I'm Andrew Protego. I don't. I don't remember you in the movie. Who are you? Oh, you're sweet. He directed it. Oh. So the first thing we do is um, it takes a village to make a film. So anybody in the cast or in the audience you want to acknowledge, this is the time to do that. No. Uh, <laughs> it's all them. Three-person show. Oh, how dare you. Um, we have Jeffrey Vincent Paris, who is in the movie. <laughs> we have Jeanette Rhodes, who's our cake time. You better stand up, girl, and take your cake time bow. <laughs> We have Vincent Albo, who did, who did production design on a shoestring and is a hero. Nothing. And Ashley, that's uh, Hasenjäger. I was just about to say that. Bless who, you. Uh, also worked with Vincent on production design. Do we miss anybody? Do we miss anybody? Did anybody, anybody else? Oh. Anybody? Anybody? Good. Bueller. Bueller. Okay, I think we should get started then. Why don't we? Let's jump into it. Let's You're do it. Using your, so. sweaty, your sweaty balls voice. <laughs> Anybody? Well, uh, we always start with the story, because uh, without a story and a script, you can't go from there. So how did the story come to be, and then how did it get to script form? You this is always yours. Well, I know. Why do you always make me answer this one? Um, uh, Tara and I uh, banter a lot as friends, and I think she was probably being bantery with me and I made a joke saying you know what we need to go to couples counseling and then we started riffing on how funny that would be if we went and it was so effective that maybe I said that you realized how in love with me you are um, and then uh, we said oh. and she I still laughed. doesn't know it but um, and then I said what a funny idea for a short so we sat down to write this as a short and on that first day we realized that it could be a feature and um, it's just I, I feel like because we had a beginning middle end to this little concept that it was uh, a really just followed that it, it was kind of easy to write a feature it was the rewrites that were really hard but the writing came really nice uh, naturally to us how many rewrites oh. well there was one and then we almost ended our friendship and then there was a second pass and then I, we almost ended it again yeah um Rewrites are hard. Holy cow, are rewrites hard. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't like that. It would be that we would send it to someone we trust or a few people. We'd get some notes. We'd tweak, and then we'd uh, send it out again or do a table read, and we'd go, oh, we can tighten this up. So it wasn't like entire passes. We were just going through little bits at a time as we were getting notes in. I'd say it took almost a year, though, from start to finish. Wow. And this was your guys' first feature. Have you done shorts before? What was the no, kind we've of context? never written anything. No. Never written, never no. made anything. This was your first whole hog in. Whole hog in. There you go. I've made things before. <laughs> You've what? what? I've made things before. <laughs> so Somebody had the captain this <laughs> Yeah, you were the, you were the veteran of the, of the crew. So I still don't think he worked <laughs> on the movie. <laughs> And I know he patted his resume. <laughs> oh, I've done this. So uh, you guys were friends for a long time. You guys were obviously both actors and all that kind of stuff. That and is the only real thing in the movie. Is so that we were we were <laughs> been friends. friends for ten years. Off and on, obviously through the process. No, we just we actually we never fought as friends until no. the rewrites, and then. then oh, that's not true. We had one big fight. Do you remember oh, in the parking true. lot where I finally? Fault. Yeah, no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it was my. <laughs> Tara likes to wait three days before she tells you how pissed she is at you. Um, <laughs> and it's always in a parking lot. So, yeah, no, our fights were great. They were, like, loud and, and fast, and then we'd be fine during this process. Um, but before that, besides the parking lot debacle, we never really fought. Yeah, yeah, but there was, there was a really good one. We were in a production meeting with uh, Andy, and I think there was one other person. Two, uh, oh, the line producer, yeah. And I literally did. I looked at her, and I go, Andrea, can I see you in the kitchen, please? <laughs> like, I'm 12. And so she drags me into the kitchen and starts screaming, but there's no door. <laughs> like, she might, why don't we just stay in the room and get screamed at? <laughs> and we walked out, and they're like this. <laughs> <laughs> like, mommy and mommy are fighting. <laughs> So, so then, Andy, how did you get plugged into this um, crazy family? 
community service. <laughs> it's about, about, yeah, that's yeah. about right. I had done a short film with Tara called Hello Caller a uh, year and a half, two years before this came about. And Tara was only exposed to me for about 10 hours and had this illusion in her mind that I was easy to get along with. <laughs> and uh, so she brought me in to meet with Andrea and we all kind of shared a vision for it and, and had a very collaborative process. And I did say at the, when Andrea and I were talking about directors, um, we said at the very get-go that we wanted a very strict no-asshole zone uh, as far as crew and actors and everybody. And I said, this guy I worked with is so nice, people will be embarrassed to be schmucks around him. <laughs> and, and that really was the only reason we hired him, and then he turned out to be a real schmuck himself. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know. There's always one. <laughs> no, that was you. Oh. Oh, yeah. It's always the one you don't know. No. Yeah. So, and then how did, it, how did the team expand from there? How did, was it people that you knew, Andy? Was it people that you guys knew? Was it just lots of favors and friends of friends? How did it kind of? Uh, you know, sort of a, a, a variation, you know, variable elements. There were people that each of us knew that we brought in and people that we didn't know before that this was our first time working with them. But it all ended up being a really good cohesive unit by the time everybody came together. I don't. Well, the DP, I thought w it was most important for Andy to feel comfortable. So we, we met a few people that he knew, and we looked at all, they were all brilliant, and we ended up going with who we went with, who he was great. And um, I, I, it, honestly, when you're an actor, you think you know. You're on set, you know. And I remember looking at Tara and going, okay, so we need a producer. What is that? What, it, what, you know, what is that called? The person who gets it done. <laughs> and people were like, I think that's a line producer. And, you know, we, we literally learned as we were going. Um, but weird things, like I was in a Ralph's that I never went to, and I hear Grano, and it turns out to be the guy who was, you know, our AD. And I, I hadn't seen him in years. I'm like, what are you doing next month, <laughs> you know, for the entire <laughs> month? Um, and then we had the remarkable experience of having a lot of free volunteers. Uh, we could not have done this movie without them. I think a lot of them came through. Like, how did we get, like, Zach Katz? Do you remember? How did we get people? Just, I don't Just miracle. my charming way. <laughs> She would be charming at Ralph's as well, and strangers would offer to work on our movie. Thank yes, you, Tara. You're welcome. No friends of friends volunteering, saying, "We'll do a, I'll do a day on your movie." I think you have that one shot when you do your first movie to ask for favors, because yeah. um, everyone wants to support your first go. And they, it was amazing how gracious and everyone was, and how relatively cheap everyone worked for. And when we watched those credits, I mean, it never fails. You just, you you were so humbled mm -hmm. by people's kindness. And I, I mean, we had, uh, Andrea and I had a friend who flew out from Australia for three weeks to work on the movie. Um, and just I extraordinary gifts just kept happening along the way. It was, it was mind blowing. Nobody was really doing this for the money because there wasn't much. And it was really gratifying to have so many people show up day after day, especially if you're working for free, there's no obligation to show up for day two if day one doesn't go well. Right. So the fact that people would come back time and time again made us feel like we you know, had, had a real family environment and you're Those right. Those people really liked me. <laughs> you especially. Wow. Well. <laughs> yeah, Thank yeah. you. Whoever, thank we'll you. We'll pretend soon. that's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then how do you guys, if this is your first feature, Financing, how how'd you go about that? Was it just out of pocket? Did you do any Kickstarter stuff? Kind of, what was that process for we you We did Indiegogo. Indiegogo, and was we it? We had some uh, private investors, and that was about it, and a lot of favors, yeah. you know? Yeah. That, that saved us, you know, having dinner with a friend of mine, and he said, who's doing your insurance? And I was like, wait, you need insurance? <laughs> and he was like, yeah. And I was like, uh, I don't know. And he was like, oh, I'll, I'll take care of it. So, I mean, it, it was just, that's, that's what I'm talking about. It was extraordinary, the amount of people who were so giving yeah. and, you know. And again, you, you, you do only get to get those things once. I, I feel, yeah, I mean, that's ideally, you ask for that once. And it's but funny we are coming to all of you for our <laughs> second go round. There's so. a hat by the door for our second feature. We really appreciate your donations. No, we, and we, t when Tara and I sat down to write, when we said, okay, if we're really gonna do this as a feature, um, let's just pick a budget. And we picked a budget out of thin air, and then we brought it to some people to have it done professionally. And everyone came in about 20% over what our initial number was. 
And at the end of the day, and I'm not kidding, we literally shot it for exactly that first budget and we came in at budget because you only have what you have. So you learn to sort of slash away the stuff you don't need and you can make it work. I know people who've made features for 50 grand, for 500 grand, I mean, it's doable as long as you write it smartly and say in a, for what you have, I think. Any advice for the first time filmmakers out there about Indiegogo or those kind of crowdsourcing? <laughs> for me, Indiegogo was great because you get to keep your money, but there's so many causes that make you feel like, kind of like a douche, you know, like my son has X, Y, and Z and will die if you don't contribute, or you can do our movie. I just felt like we were <laughs> like sandwiched between real causes, whereas Kickstarter is really for people who kind of love films and are cinephiles. So I, I think if you do it, if you s set a smart number, Kickstarter, for film is probably the better way to go. Well, I just, and I think we all get inundated with there's so many, and it's just, uh, you know, the thing is, is you just have to kind of pick and choose and hope to God that for some reason people want to choose yours. Well, and I was going to say that most, whether you're doing Kickstarter or Indiegogo, most of the money that comes in, a large percentage of it, is going to be from people you know who want to support you, and this just happens to be the platform. Unless you have a name or something really substantial behind you that people can get behind, and that's, I think... And in oh. fact, weren't we listed as one of the top 10 to watch on, kick, like, a crowdfunding? Yeah, some magazine yeah. named our campaign, which apparently was kind of funny, because some actors came in, they're like, we weren't going to audition, but we liked your campaign. Um, and we were listed as one of the ones to watch, and it didn't really, even with that, it didn't necessarily mean an influx of money. We got some random people from overseas, you know, but for the most part, it's your friends. Yeah. I'm huge overseas. She is. Yeah. Germany? <laughs> they love me. You and David Hasselhoff. Germany. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of bigger than the Hoff up uh, now. Hey. So. After this. You're the woman to beat in Germany. Good to know. <laughs> um, so you obviously, as actors, know a lot of actors. So did you write for actors or some or no? Or you just like, you just wrote and... We did not. And it was very difficult because... You know, you, you want you want to use your friends, and we um, when we decided to get bring a casting director in, we uh, the first job I ever got was on Who's the Boss, and the assistant on that show got me in for a general, and he's actually who ended up casting our movie, so it was full circle. I went, we've been friends for all these years, and. You know, he said, is there anybody you want, specifically you want to bring in? And we were like, let's just, let's... We did bring in some people who had done the reading for us because they were just really great in the reading, but Andy hadn't been there for the first read-through. But even before we got Greg uh, Orson involved, Tara and I said, okay, we've never really written before. Should we think of who we want to play these roles or not? And we realized if you have your best friend in mind or, you know, to play that dude, you're going to write for them. And we thought, let's not do that. Let's just try to write what we think is the best script we can do. And then if someone fits perfectly, I instead of tailoring it, because we were tailoring it, the parts for ourselves. So if you're tailoring everything, you can get stuck going, oh, he wouldn't do that funny. He would do it this way funny. And, and you're changing your story in a way. Um, yeah, and at the end of the day, I mean, then you go, oh, God, I have four great friends who could play that role. You're almost better off going out, getting Jeffries and some Paris, to <laughs> 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 who we love and adore. Um, and, you know, we've had the experience a number of times as actors where our friends do their $25,000 feature, and you're in it, and then they get a million, and you're suddenly not. And we're like, we're going to do it the opposite way. We're going to make sure we bring our friends in on our next one. We actually have a budget. It would be nice. Yeah, we didn't care about the other idiots. We were like, well... <laughs> Um, being actors, what was it like being on the other side of, of the table and that process for you guys? Terrifying. Yeah. It's, so? it's absolutely terrifying. And I think it's so many, I mean, the, the, the Picasso scene, we thought that was a really funny scene. And those actors came in and did it and we were like moved. And I was like, oh, it's now out of our hands. Mm -hmm. It becomes the actors. And it was... It was amazing to watch, and the people who would come in with these resumes that were just extraordinary, and you, you, it's uh, humbling. That's I know, I thing. cried. We said no to this one actor, and I literally called her crying. I'm like, we just said, I, I, for me, it was the most liberating thing to watch auditions because I thought, oh, so it's really true. You can be brilliant in the room, and you're just not 
there's someone else who just fit our image of what it is. I mean, I even Facebooked one guy who came in and did an amazing audition. She said I was stalkery, creepy lady for doing that. But I had to let him know, because I can't, you, you know those times where you go in the room and you think you've kicked ass and you're like, holy shit, I didn't even hear back? For all you know, you did. And they're like, too bad, um, the person we want to cast that person with is just too old or too young. And you never hear feedback. It's, I think, the worst thing about the auditioning process. So I Facebook this kid. By the way, we're having who, lunch next week. Who became a good friend of mine. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm kidding. He did become a good friend I'd work with him. Yeah. yeah, he was just so, his audition was so unbelievably good, and yet the person... And that was the difficulty, yeah. is that everybody brought something, well, not one person. <laughs> oh, There's always one. There was, oh, there was the one. Improver? Oh, I was improver? angry after she left. Is yeah. she here? Um, <laughs> Back corner, blonde. Oh, no. um, hi. That's no. a lesson, too. If you're going to go in and you want to funny up a script, you better, A, make sure you're funnier than the writing, and don't overdo it. Oh, Throw you it know what? I'm going to tell the story, and I hope to God she's watching this. <laughs> no, I just got that. pissed off all over oh again. God. She He's walks coming. in, and she <laughs> says, oh, my God, I loved your script. I'm like, thank you, thank you. Because she tries to take credit. She does that every time. <laughs> Anything they laughed at was my line. Anyway, um, no, so she says this, and then all of a sudden, we're doing the first scene with her, and Andrea, you were reading with her, were you? Reading with her. And all of a sudden, she starts improv mm. And she keeps improv And she's still improv Oh, to so the point where I'm like, what? I don't know how to answer you. So we finished the first scene, and I'm like, <laughs> okay. And then we go into the second scene, and it gets even worse. She's now basically doing her own story. She's doing a one-woman show. And literally, she finished, and I went, thank you. And she walked out, and I said, 10 to 1, she's a groundling. And she was. Uh, <laughs> my apologies to all the groundlings we in love, I was no, going to say, yeah. Love the not groundlings. that that automatically means that you're going to go into but the I'm, room. Wow. Either. I was like, wow, actors should learn. Groundlings. You just don't. You want to... You wanna, do one or two lines, that's fine. But I literally was like, she's not even getting close to our script anymore. She, <laughs> was, doing she was in else. Chinatown. And there was one one person who came in and took a four minute scene and turned it into, I'm not kidding, a 12 minute scene. <laughs> we're like, by the end, we're like, okay. And then she at the very end, she goes, We said, Great, thank you so much. She said, I could do that better. Can we do it again? We all went, No! <laughs> no! We've seen it. You know, you learned, you have to. It's oh. I also went, because you get inundated with like who you can bring in, and I clicked like 57 people, and they're like, that's four weeks of auditions. <laughs> You'd realize, not, first you have to get past just getting in the room. Wow, do we, it, it's, a, it's, it's a challenge to get work. So anytime you get any job, just know it's kind Be of amazing yeah. when you see what happens. So um, peel back the curtain, I'll sell Andy on this. What was the conversations to have to go, okay, this We've, we've settled on this is the person. What was the conversation, starting with you, that talk about vision and getting on the same page? Was it before or after? Well, because this is such a film about couples, mm -hmm. and those couples have to have chemistry, we went back and we looked at people's tapes because in the room can be one thing, but then seeing them on camera, you can have a totally different perception. So we would go back and look at tapes and look at pairs of tapes and couples together and see who we felt was gonna have that chemistry and be the right fit, which is, why it became so difficult when there was somebody whose performance we loved but wasn't quite a good fit with the other person that we mm -hmm. loved. It's a good problem to have, but um, that's really where we, where we went, was pairing people up and figuring out where those dynamics were gonna be the best for the story and for the, for the whole group dynamic, really. Did you guys felt like you were on the same page or there's a lot of debate or like you like this person and you like this person and you just talked it out until you landed somewhere? Here, you know what's funny? We kind of promised, we all watched the tapes and we did a one, two, three, our first, second, third. Oftentimes it was all of, all of us might have had the same two, but maybe my one was some random and her. And so sometimes it wasn't anybody's number one who made it, but we, when you say one, two, three, it's like by a hair. And it, uh, we all, n there's not one person I think who was cast where one of us was upset about it. We all really liked our oh, cast. Jeffrey. Besides Jeffrey, he's here. <laughs> if Jeffrey wasn't here, we'd be honest, but otherwise. <laughs> He squeaked in. He squeaked Jen, in. Jeff um, won us through compliments. I love your script. <laughs> and if I could be a part of it, you he walked down like, oh, we're <laughs> it's not a question. <laughs> Guy thinks our script is brilliant. And he was brilliant. Um, how many production days, rehearsals? What was that? No rehearsal. No rehearsal. No rehearsal. 15 days. 15 days. 15 yeah. days. And I'm proud to say that only one of those days did we go over 12 hours. 
only one day over 12 hours. We know 15. what we're doing. <laughs> uh, well, we also had one of the SAG vice presidents in the cast, so. He was eyeing it. Stupid. <laughs> Audience um, threw out a question, which was my next question. You must have read my notes. Um, locations, where did you shoot? Um, you guys have a story behind that, so I'll let you tell that as well. Well, that's, yeah. Uh, Malibu. And Andrea did something brilliant, which is we, of Credit. course, could not afford a location scout. And um, she started going on vacation rental places. Like home away. And not lying to the people, actually telling them that we wanted to shoot a movie. And we got this place for a, a very good deal. Something happened later, but... Uh, yeah. That... Yeah. We, we, so we were, 12 of those 15 days were at that house in Malibu, which was wonderful. I stayed there most of the time because it, the it's about a 50 yeah. minute drive and it meant that I could plan my next day's shots and it's kind of a luxury to have. But because we had gotten in after another group had, had already reserved a weekend right in the middle of where we were shooting, we had to leave for two and a half days and then come back. Now we were able to put some stuff in the garage and we didn't have to fully load out but then we went home, I think it was an overnight shoot, so Saturday morning, 4 a.m., we wrapped. No, we did, it was Friday. Friday, was it Friday at 4 a.m.? Yeah. It was okay, because they came in. It was Friday, Friday, and what I got to tell you is it was a 90-year-old's birthday that, that they had. Because there is a pool there, and it had a water slide. And she <laughs> we to didn't down show the it, because it was 90. really foul. Um, and this is going on YouTube. We <laughs> had this amazing overnight shoot, and it was, Andrea, it was the end of the first week, and Andrea and I, yeah, the yeah. sun's coming up at 6 a.m. And <laughs> we're like, and look what we've done. And we're like <laughs> driving back to L.A., and I'm like, oh, my God. And she's like, let's go get pancakes and just talk about how great we are. Oh, and yeah. How great I think we high-fived like twice over syrup. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah. just this beautiful thing. And so she drops me off, I go to sleep, and I wake up to 20 messages yeah. on my machine. And Half of them were from me. Yeah. Um, I woke up to, oh, my God. Andrea, this is Elizabeth from the location, <laughs> and um, yeah, they're not leaving till Monday night. And I like for when you're on a 15 day shoot, we had I think Larissa was leaving to do a pilot, and uh, losing a day is akin to ruining the movie because you're never gonna get these people back, not for what we were paying them, and um, and you can't turn 15 into 14. You just kind of can't. So um, they were so, so we were losing it two days actually if they stayed two till days. Monday afternoon. And um, I, I, call, I finally got her to give me the guy's number, the son of the 90-year-old, who he must have been in his 50s or 60s. And um, I very professionally called him and burst into tears <laughs> and begged him. <laughs> I tried to do producer voice. I'm like, hello, this is Andrew Grano from BMW. <laughs> and I lost my shit. I was so like, that's <laughs> a good point. Just cry. <laughs> Always cry. And I swear I didn't set out. I set out to be super professional and reasonable. And I lost, I, well, we were on very little sleep, too. You and I had a few... We were laughing so hard at one point, I thought we might get committed. We were driving home. <laughs> like, you know that laughter, and the next day you're like, what were you laughing about? I don't know. And I just remember a chicken sandwich and not being able to breathe. <laughs> That's all I remember. <laughs> yeah, so um, we, on the day that we lost the shoot, we ended up doing a pickup which uh, scene. Which, no, it was always meant to, but it didn't make the movie. Got so. cut. It's the um, one scene that got cut for the movie. It's the one scene that got cut, and we were driving there. And I get a phone call from, was it you or was it one? It was, I think it was the line producer. And he goes, hey, we have a problem. And I go, what? We didn't have a permit for one place. And that Only was one. this day. Yeah. We didn't have a permit there. And we had scouted it. It was, it was around the corner from where we were filming at the, the house. And we were doing a side of the road scene. And when we scouted it, we were like, this is great. We're in the middle of nowhere, up on Mulholland Highway, blah, blah, blah. It's perfect. And then, you know. We get there that day, and there are signs up that that was the parking lot for the Jewish World Festival. <laughs> and we were there about 7 a.m., and they're coming in at like 10.30 or yeah. 11. And we had planned to be there for several hours, unpermitted, of course. And uh, so we immediately you know, got into action and started <laughs> setting up stuff and up. And then at 1.20 cops, and 20 motorcycle cops, cops are coming towards waved us. Waved at us. We're like, man, we're, <laughs> we're like... <laughs> Just the, secret, the, the secret to that is have your crew set up on the side of the road with such conspicuous <laughs> equipment, 20 by silks, so that anybody driving by would think they must have a permit. They wouldn't. <laughs> who has yeah. the cojones to do that? To do that. We do. <laughs> yeah. um, Andrew, um, I, I need to know just personally as a director, what is it like to work with some fiery women who, who have some personality? Feel free to be honest. <laughs> Honestly, it was, it was great. 
there, you know, obviously there were certain moments where we didn't all see eye to eye about things, but we worked through it. We collaborated. And no, I'd, I'd love I'm to saving those it moments. For the, yes. No, I'm saving it for the commentary track. Um, sp but sp and this is for all of you too, because they were actors. They were the lead actors. The lead and actors, so the writers, and, and the, the producers. producers. <laughs> and, and so, I've, I've done. What's you know, quote like? unquote vanity projects before. And so the fact that. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I know where you're going. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> sit, sit. Don't leave me here. I've done that, and it's not always been a great experience. So, you know, that I, my, my feelers were up at the beginning of this, and I went, is this going to work? And I had worked with Tara before, <laughs> so I knew that <laughs> she and I would get along. This was the wild card. And. <laughs> We, we really, truly, I mean, if there had been a problem, we would have, I think, all known it before we started production. Oh, for sure. And the fact that we're all sitting up here and we're really good friends still, better friends than we were even We then. were until that vanity project <laughs> thing. Until about four seconds ago, my friend. It's testament to the fact that I, we, we, we made a good team. We, you know, we, we joke about when he said vanity project, but we, uh, we would check in a lot and go, let's not make this a vanity project. Let's make sure every character has something interesting to say and is funny. And actually, in a lot of the test screenings, the, in a way, I'm not giving credit to necessarily us as actors, but Sam and, and Kat have this dynamic that people are interested in. So a lot of the things were like, get back to them. What happens with them? Because we, you know, we would kind of want to go off and just see more of the other. For us, that's more interesting to see the other couples. And you guys were never precious about anything either. There was, I never felt like I had to hold back on giving you any sort of feedback. I, I knew that we would all, you know, that's true. be able to actually have a, an adult conversation about it, and yeah. you wouldn't. Meltdown in front of me, at least. No, just behind your back. <laughs> and I appreciate it. That, that happened a lot. Um, so being writer, producer, actor, when you were on set as an actor, was one of you still had the producer hat on? Did you feel like you could release that? Or was it always, I'm, I'm all things at all times? What? what? No, I, I think people tended to go to Andrea more for the real producer questions, <laughs> and then they bring over a blank piece of paper and go, Tara, can you sign that? And I'd be like, sure, <laughs> thanks. Um, but no, <laughs> I, I think it, it, we were surrounded by such good people, and they really did try and, and keep that stuff away. Uh, there's some stuff that you just have to deal with. Yeah. Um, you know, actors who were late to set because of their hair constantly, but we got through that. Anyway, um, we put her hair on the call sheet. They did. Separately. They made it one and a half. One point five. Which um, I found really funny. It was. Uh, <laughs> but no, we were pretty. We, we were pretty blessed that way. Everybody was pretty good about keeping the major. No, that's not true. That's just not true. Oh what my you're god, saying. we you're did everything straight out of your ass. We had really bad crew. People would come up to us and be like, "Okay, so listen, for tomorrow we can exchange the three ton truck for the five ton truck, but it'll mean this much more. But you'll lose a guy." And they would say stuff, and you'd go, "Yeah," and. <laughs> And then I would turn to him, I go, how much do we need that light? He'd go, we need it. And so you know, it was like some of that, and then it, you'd run up for a touch-up and go. But in a weird way, you're on such a high, and there's so much adrenaline. Maybe like childbirth, you forget. Because it, right after, we thought, we'll never do that again. But now we're like, hmm, maybe we'll have a second baby. <laughs> um, you know. But you're exhausted, but it's kind of awesome. I do remember at the end of almost every day going, did we just act at all? What happened? We, we had no idea. We were so, and maybe it kept us from being too precious about the work. Because, you know, you write it, maybe we would have. And, and the first three days was just Andrea and I, nobody <laughs> yeah. else. And so, we'll see we came on the third. Very small spaces. Yeah, and did so the kiss scene. They scheduled the kiss scene for the second day, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's and that's one, right that's one shot. So that's a three-page scene. One shot. You're welcome. Thanks, Sandy. <laughs> so those pauses were literally us going, I have no mm. idea what the next line is. Then <laughs> they look away, it's like, hmm. But well, make it look interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'd be, I'd, I was the driver. She'd come to my house, I'd drive in, I'd go, okay, what scene are we doing today? And then we'd run lines and then forget them. And then, you know. But people think if you write a script, you've memorized it. I'm like, on what planet have you? Well, and I want to say one, one more story is the scene that takes place uh, the morning when you guys come out on the patio and they're talking to each other. Have you been crying? And oh. <laughs> so because we lost that location that day, that was one of the scenes we were supposed to shoot. And it got pushed. And that was the day we went over 12 hours. We were already filming out there. And it was like 9 o'clock at night. 
We'd been going for about 12 she hours. She was doing the walk and talk scene with Eric. Yeah, and you were getting out of makeup. No, I was done. You were I done. was That's getting right. to play producer oh, for once. Was and I was like in video village, oh, yeah. like watching, going, Andrea's hair looks big. <laughs> Bring that down. <laughs> and I was feeling so good. And our AD came up and he's, he called me T Bone. And he's like, T Bone, uh, they're going to need to shoot scene 28. And I said, Oh, what's scene 28? And he said, Oh, that's a fight scene with you and Grano over there. And I went, Ryan, we don't know those. We, we, don't, we don't know names because they're going to need you in hair and makeup. So I go upstairs, I get dressed, and I'm standing there, and she goes, why are you back in your outfit? She's, she's up on the porch smoking, looking really tense, like my, like a modern Juliet. <laughs> Some post-modern Juliet. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you back? Yeah. And I'm like, they need to shoot scene 28. She goes, what's scene 28? <laughs> so that was the tensest night. That was the only night that we were actually really bitchy actresses. And at one point, actually, I look at Tara, and the, for some reason, they wanted her to have like super tranny eyelashes every day. And at one point, like they were half off, <laughs> and I said, your eyelashes falling off. And she said, well, get that makeup girl. I go, well, I sent her home, because I felt so bad, because we had gone over 12 hours. I said, I sent her home. She said, you what? <laughs> Action. <Burn. laughs> yeah. And it's transgendered. <laughs> Tra it's tr yeah. not tranny, not tranny. It's transgendered. <laughs> we apologize to the transgender oh, really? community. Yeah. I was just at Outfest. Everyone was saying tranny. No, mm -hmm. nobody was saying <laughs> that. Sorry. You'll have to go next. Remember next when we year. talked about editing certain <laughs> things out of the talk back? Dead us. Oh, we just found one. something. <laughs> My apologies. Um, we could have you guys here all night, but we're not going to. Um, but so lastly, I would like to hear from you guys, kind of the producing filmmaker end, any advice for someone who wants to be first time filmmakers like yourself, feature filmmakers, and then Andy for you first time, anybody that wants to be a director, so. Um, my thing is, uh, it's twofold, take care of your actors. Um, I think especially on lower budget things, um, we forget about the actors, and we actually had two people who were, and they were both working for free, so it can be done no matter what the budget, that we're solely concentrated on making sure the actors were taken care of. Um, we've all done work where there's no place to sit, there's no water, got a guy walking around going, hey, we're going to Subway, what do you want? We, as actors, were like, what do we not want? And we wanted to make sure our actors were very fed and taken care of and they were comfortable and all of that. And especially for older actors, please treat them just with huge amounts of respect. And I mean, I'm talking about calling them Miss, Mr., until they tell you otherwise. I just think that, that we need to continue. <laughs> I was just gonna say Mrs. Carson. Oh, because shut up. <laughs> as if you were talking about yourself. Yeah, that's but funny. I, I know. Yeah, that'll go in the sequel. I stopped myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I really do. I think that, that on low budget especially, it falls by the wayside. And also, take care of your crew. Because those are the people who are there first thing and last thing and trying to make really crappy places look good, which you two did. Thank you, guys. Honestly, thank you. I don't think it's like, it's hard to explain what you did. If you saw what this place looked like before they got their hands on it, it's a miracle. And you guys just, I don't know, hats off. I sing your praises all the time. I would say if you're gonna shoot your first film, uh, you can't guarantee the outcome and you can't guarantee if it'll sell. There's a lot you can't guarantee. The one thing you can go for and guarantee is to have fun while you're doing it. Um, we promised ourselves we would, and at the end of the day, we looked at each other and we thought, you know what, whether this product turns out the way we wanted it to, God, did we have fun. And we made lifelong friends in the process. And honestly, yes, if you have investors, you have to pay them back if you can. And all this stuff that's really important now. But in that moment, having fun, being surrounded by people you enjoy, I, invaluable. I will look back on this as w one of the best experiences of my life. I'll just tell you a quick story. With one I, exception. Shut up. To <laughs> um, I was listening. I was around the corner and the sound woman, who's this amazing woman who's just got a, an amazing resume, and when she had a young boom utility, is that what they're right. called? Yeah. And he goes, God, I just, I'm having so much fun on this. And she looked at him and she said, honey, this isn't a typical set. <laughs> and I went, I literally went, we're doing this right then, you know? Mm -hmm. Everybody should walk away from, from an experience having a good time. We're pretty blessed that we get to do what we do. So, okay, Andy, your turn. I, I guess my advice, aside from that, would be that I, I see a lot of younger filmmakers 
who get really excited about the technology and the toys. Oh, the, the latest RED camera, and oh, did they upgrade the sensor? And I'm like, do you have a good story? It's the story and the characters first. I, I don't care if you shoot it on VHS. If, if you've got really compelling characters and you do a great job with casting and everybody comes together, it's going to show and people are going to want to see what you've made. If you have all the toys and money in the world, you make Transformers 4. And I think that <laughs> nothing against, no, a lot against that. But I think that there's, I don't want to see that. And I know that there are a lot of people who want stories that aren't that. And I think that the, that's the important thing is you can get it done on a fraction of, of you know, a dollar if you have mm -hmm. the people who are passionate about it and want to be there and make it. And it doesn't matter about your equipment or your lighting. Just tell your stories. I think they're the perfect place to end. Let's give them a hand. Please do fill out those surveys and hand them in, and they'll be around to give them hugs and say hi. Thanks for coming, guys.